One solid suit, one pattern suit. A blazer sport coat with coordinated pants. A pattern sport coat with coordinated pants. A water repellent outer coat. And a warmer wool coat. Every item needed in a man's basic dress wardrobe. This eight-piece wardrobe sells for only $600 at Foreman and Clark. A lot of money, but only a fraction of what you'd pay elsewhere. And it guarantees that the impression you make in public will be outstanding. Be well-dressed, affordably. Shop Foreman and Clark. Discover a Minneapolis radio station with teenage disc jockeys. KBEM FM Radio. And find out why we buy the things we buy. Could the secret be cleverly hidden in the advertisements? Dr. Wilson Key will show you some amazing things inside some very ordinary looking ads on the next PM Magazine. PM Magazine. WCCO Television, Minneapolis, St. Paul. From WCCO Television, the Northwest's leading news station, this is the 10 p.m. report. Good evening. In the news tonight, Senator Kennedy comes out swinging against President Carter's handling of the Cuban refugees. Minnesota may be in store for a new pipeline, which would ease our energy worries. Twin City teenagers looking for jobs this summer have cause to worry. There just aren't many jobs available, and we'll have a report on that. The Twins beat the Red Sox in Boston tonight. And also tonight, the start of a special series on public schools, public school teachers, and their troubles. It's called Flunking the Future. But first tonight, we tip our collective hats to a father-son team of adventurers who made aviation history with one of man's oldest flying machines, the hot air balloon. A Maxie Anderson, his 23-year-old son Chris, had planned to float from the west coast uh, to Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. But they drifted hundreds of miles north, learning, le le landing near the mouth of the St. Lawrence River in Quebec. The Andersons thus become the first ever to cross the continent nonstop in a balloon. And Maxie says this flight was tougher than the one he made two years ago over the Atlantic. He said it was a strenuous four days. Nothing uh, to be proven by flying a balloon except to Chris and I that we got the grit to do it. And uh, when you live for three days on oxygen and uh, all your water freezes because it's more than 40 below at times, uh, it's, uh, I think it tests your metal and, uh, and uh, makes you feel better about yourself. The helium-filled balloon was not severely damaged upon landing, even though they did come down in a clump of trees at first and then blew clear to an open area in the woods. Doug? Well, skydiver Ilizan Taylor landed in a cluster of pine trees yesterday. The only thing is she had fallen 7,500 feet to earth when her chute failed to open. Miraculously, the 20-year-old woman from Mobile, Alabama, limped away from that an incident with only a sprained ankle and bruises. Cuban refugee Alfre Alfredo Hernandez was arrested after arriving in the U.S. today. Hernandez is believed to be the man who left the U.S. for Cuba aboard a plane he hijacked back in 1969. The FBI has charged him with air piracy and conspiracy. The flood of Cubans reaching the U.S. may climb to 60,000 by month's end. Two more refugee centers have been opened in Maryland and Pennsylvania. The handling of the refugee problem came under harsh criticism by Senator Edward Kennedy today in the Senate Judiciary Committee. Kennedy's statement had heavy political overtones. We cannot welcome refugees if there's no order to their movement, no screening to help them, no funds to support them. Day after day for the past four weeks, we have seen this humanitarian and political crisis grow increasingly out of control with no decisive action or leadership capable of meeting the challenge. 
First, there was the attack by Cuban fighter planes on a Bahamian vessel. Then today, we learned that a U.S. helicopter searching for crewmen missing from the ship was buzzed by two Cuban MiG-21 fighter planes. The Department, State Department has issued a strong formal pr protest with Cuba for the incident. Despite strong protests both at home and abroad, the docudrama Death of a Princess was shown on public television tonight without incident locally. The film depicts the execution of an Arabian princess and her lover. But station KTCA in St. Paul was deluged with phone calls, some of them threatening. Station spokesmen say it appeared to be an organized protest. The Saudi Arabian government has threatened to use oil as a weapon if the film is shown. The Saudis claim the film has many inaccuracies. There may soon be a new pipeline bringing crude oil to the state of Minnesota. Energy editor Tom Hendrick has more on that story. The new pipeline would supply Minnesota with 130,000 barrels of oil a day as soon as it's operational. Reaching an eventual daily capacity of 200,000 barrels, it would more than compensate for Canadian crude, now the state's biggest source of supply, which is being phased out because of a change in Canada's export policy. The Wood River Pipeline will also replace the proposed Northern Pipeline, which has been strongly opposed for two years by farmers and environmentalists who claimed valuable open land would be destroyed. This new plan will mean no new construction in Minnesota and no adverse environmental impacts. It will run from Wood River, Illinois, for 250 miles across Missouri, a state with a siting and permit process considered easier than Minnesota or Iowa, where no opposition is anticipated. From Bethany, Missouri, to Mason City, Iowa, it will run along existing right-of-ways, where other pipelines already are in place. And from Mason City, the oil will be fed into existing pipelines for transport to the Twin Cities. Announced at the governor's ready? office today, the new pipeline will be a joint venture of Coke Oil and Williams Pipeline Company. The agreement between Coke Industries and the Williams Pipeline Company on a new line is extremely important and is certainly good news to all of us here in Minnesota. The pipeline is scheduled to be operational by next January, and if everything goes as planned, Minnesota's once shaky energy supply future may be secured. In fact, the plan appears a little too good to be true. And some question today why this route wasn't chosen before instead of the ones which brought so much conflict from environmentalists. Tom Hendrick, WCCO Television News, the state capitol. A suspect in a series of robberies and assaults and women in the Summit University area is in custody in St. Paul tonight. Mohammed Abdul Sharif, 31 years old, will be arraigned tomorrow on several charges including aggravated robbery, assault, and kidnapping. An autopsy will be performed tomorrow to determine the exact cause of death of a Stillwater prison inmate, 26-year-old Mitchell Turpin, who died after falling from the fourth tier of Cell Hall A. Prison officials are investigating how Turpin fell. The king, to be sure, the most valuable piece in the game of chess. In savings, it's the TCF $10,000 Money Market Certificate, with a rate that can be over 10%. The TCF six-month money market certificate. Fully insured by an agency of the federal government. Truly the king of savings accounts. What makes Seiko the world's best-selling quality quartz watch? The ultra-thin elegance of Seiko's classic styling? Or is it the rich perfection of every detail? Or Seiko technology that created the first analog quartz alarm? What makes Seiko the best-selling quality quartz watch? Maybe it's simply the best. So give him Seiko first in quality quartz, time after time after time. Seiko watches, available at Sears. This is a Honda portable generator. It does a lot of useful things. It can run my TV. It can cook my dinner. It even lights up my patio. It gives you up to 500 watts of power, no matter how far away you get from an electrical outlet. Now you've got power, when and where you need it. The Honda Portable Generator. For camping, hunting, boating, even charging your car battery. Honda. Power when and where you need it. The Senate tonight has approved a $613 billion budget for fiscal 1981. It's technically a balanced budget, but will require dipping into funds earmarked for a tax cut. Among the last-minute changes in the budget was the restoration of $300 million for Saturday mail service. 
Secretary of State Edmund Muskie today consulted some of his old Senate friends before he begins his first trip abroad tomorrow. It's his first assignment as Secretary of State, and he's going to Europe to urge our allies to stand firm on sanctions against Iran. Three Air Force men who died in the ill-fated attempt to rescue the hostages in Iran will be buried in a common grave Wednesday at Arlington National Cemetery. The Pentagon says their remains are so badly burned they could not be identified. Dave? Pope uh, John Paul II is back home at the Vatican tonight. The pontiff headed home earlier today, wrapping up his 11-day swing through six African nations. Before leaving, the Pope repeated the message he has carried throughout his trip. He urged Africans to disdain materialism, warned them not to imitate foreigners interested in power. The U.S. Supreme Court today handed down a decision which would seem to cloud uh, rather than clarify the Miranda decision, uh, which offers guidelines on the rights of suspects. The High Court uh, decided that it is illegal for police to make casual conversation in a suspect's presence, which is calculated to trick the suspect into a confession. Then the High Court went on to uphold the murder conviction of a man caught in just such circumstances. The Supreme Court's decision on the Bethel Job Corps Center was much more direct and to the point. The court decided that there is no need for an environmental impact assessment of the Job Corps Center site, which means the major roadblock to the site has been cleared. A community group in Bethel had challenged the center, arguing that an environmental report should have been filed before the center was planned. Unemployment will surely take its toll on many people this year, but teenagers are expected to really feel a crunch, especially this summer. And Tony Sappold has a report on the forecast for Twin Cities use. Officials still blame the problem of high youth unemployment on the economy. Local agencies which try to help young people find summer jobs say they are only halfway toward reaching their annual goal. Some major businesses which normally pledge summer jobs are not doing so this year, mainly because of a cutback in general hiring and heavy layoffs among the adult workforce. While some teenagers find luck in landing summer or long-term employment, the number of those still seeking jobs is still alarmingly high. Federal statistics show that the percentage of unemployed minority youth between the ages of 16 and 19 is twice the national average of 16%. I know I've been looking and the only problem I've been having is that I am still in school and the really thing is I need a diploma. That's the most important thing I feel that you need to get a job, to get started. Most of the jobs that I'm out for, you know, you have to have some kind of qualifications and that I do not have. I've been looking for about six months and as far as anything in particular, just something, I'm a Spanish major right now and I'm finding it rather difficult to find something in that major simply because I don't have the experience, you know, to back up my schooling. This summer, employment officials will be depending on the public and the private sector for job opportunities for young people. But with a high unemployment rate and a slack in general hiring, young people won't be the only ones in a dilemma. Too few jobs are likely to be the problem for almost everyone who needs them. Tony Saffold, WCCO Television News in St. Paul. New tests show that Minnesota students are scoring better on math tests than the national average. The tests were given to 4th and 11th graders. The State Board of Education also finds that students in very small districts and in Minneapolis, St. Paul, and Duluth had somewhat lower scores than in other districts in the state. Public education and public school teachers have been criticized and challenged in recent years more than ever before. Tonight we begin a series of reports which examines the state of the teaching profession. It's called a Flunking the Future. Barb Brown reports. Education has come a long way from the days of the one-room schoolhouse, from the days when the schoolmarm had to stack the stove, fill the lamps, and teach eight different grades at once. You'd think modernization would have made life easier for teachers, but are the demands on teachers less today? Recent years have been tumultuous ones for education. Enrollments began to decline as the post-war baby boom generation grew up. Divorce rates skyrocketed, meaning more and more students come from single-parent homes, and drugs filtered down from older siblings into the grade schools. Now you not only have to be trained in your area, but you also have to serve as a kind of social service agency. You have to be a counselor, you have to be involved with drug awareness, death awareness, uh, all of these different things. You have to take care of sex education, a parental liaison, all of this kind of business that there just isn't enough hours. And, and I know of no single human being who has those 
kinds of skills. As we've studied education today, we found a paradox. At the same time as demands on teachers have increased, we found that public appreciation for educators appears to have diminished. It used to be that teachers were the leading citizens in the community. Everyone looked up to teachers. They were somehow uh, a cut above everybody else, or at least they, people treated them that way because of the contribution they made to the, to the community via education. That's not the case anymore. Now we're blamed for a lot of the things that go wrong. Then there's the question of salaries. Do we pay teachers enough? Teachers, I think, are supposed to be role models to students of what a success is. <laughs> and they're anything but successful. If they're groveling, if they're crawling, if they've got a moonlight, if they've got to, you know, work three jobs, extracurricular activities, just to make ends meet, they aren't successful. And how can they be role models to tomorrow's citizens of what a successful person is? And in many districts, declining enrollments have meant massive and demoralizing staff cuts. When you're in a period of decline, it's kind of like, like there's a layer of death over all of us. What are some of the consequences of these changes in the world of education? Just a wholesale bailout, and it's unfortunate. We definitely are seeing a, a teacher shortage. In the days of the wooden one-room schoolhouse, there was a teacher shortage, and we're beginning to see a teacher shortage again. But in the world of the modern concrete classroom, the reasons for the shortage are different. In this series, we'll look at education today. We'll examine what the job of teaching is like, and we'll talk to teachers and former teachers about salaries and morale. We'll ponder the question, are we flunking the future? Reed Jansen's my Piper stockbroker. Has been for years. Way back when I needed growth stocks, he found them for me. Later, he understood how to make that growth pay off to help raise my family. And now, thanks to Pete, I moved into investments for a steady retirement income. Talk about understanding. I call his company Piper Jaffrey and Hopwood and Jensen. Understanding you is our stock in trade at Piper Jaffray and Hopwood. And Jensen. Meet Horizons, the new shoes that comfort your feet, curve for curve. The soft rise of the toes holds your foot in place. A gentle lift supports your arch, and this hollow hugs your heel. Horizons are where feet and comfort meet, and their light flexi bottoms tame hard sidewalks. Horizons by Naturalizer, comfort you've got to feel. Horizons, feel their comfort at these fine stores. If you could tell Toro five things you want in a mower, what would they be? Oh, easy starting? You got it. Steel wheels, long life, and a bag in the back. You know, for easy handling. You got it. And a tough, dependable engine. You got it. How about an exclusive selective pace control that automatically adjusts to your pace? I've got that, too? You've got it all in this dependable, long life Toro. Now, haven't you done without a Toro long enough? Available at these participating dealers. If you're a business supplier advertising in all these books, let me show you how to make your ad budget go a lot farther in just one book. This is GTE's C directory, and it's for business suppliers only. No wasted circulation, lower advertising rates, larger ads. The C directory lets you be seen. Now business suppliers have their own yellow pages. The C directory. Shouldn't you be in the book? To order your ad, call 854-0828. A tornado uh, hit Sedalia, Missouri tonight, injuring 26 people. It hit a factory, a trailer, a, a trailer park, and a drive-in theater. The National Guard has been called in to assist the people there. In our area, rain is not becoming so, all that uncommon an element in our well, weather drama. We've had a whole quarter of an inch in the last yeah. 30 days. That's really good. Well, I mean, rain Saturday. <laughs> had some tonight. Yeah, we Not had much, that. was That's it? That's true. It's not over with yet. And, uh, you know, those tornadoes occurring down in the, uh, the south-central part of the U.S., it really extend from there all the way up into uh, parts of Pennsylvania. We've had reports of tornadoes in Pennsylvania uh, late this evening, too. So some oh, that's quite very a active geographic weather. spread, isn't it? It is, really. Very active weather just to the south of us, and we're catching the, the northern fringes of it again. Isn't Ooh, that pretty? Yeah. Ooh. 
Let's take a look at our uh, present conditions, or our high and low of the past 24 hours. Uh, 66, uh, 38. Uh, we are getting some light rain outside right now. Sunrise in the morning at 547 and sunset at 833. We've even had a little bit of thunder shower activity here over the mm -hmm. Twin Cities in the last hour. Temperature 51 degrees, uh, humidity 66 percent. Winds are east at 10 and the barometer 2984 and falling. Uh, right now, as we mentioned, uh, some shower activity over the Twin Cities, extending all the way down into uh, the eastern part of South Dakota. Some heavier activity down over Iowa. We're getting some reports of some thunderstorms, and actually those thunderstorms are beginning to move up into the southeastern part of our area. And uh, we've had uh, some light thunderstorm activity move over the Twin Cities and now move over into uh, west-central Wisconsin. Temperatures mostly in the 40s, 50s, a couple of 60s down in the southern part of the area. Our weather net uh, te temperatures uh, came in in the uh, 60s. We had 170 degree reading, St. Peter today, but everybody else is up in the upper 60s to mid 60s. The uh, radar uh, from Waterloo, Iowa looks like this. Kind of interesting to see some of the heavier rainfall amounts and some uh, actual thunderstorms occurring down there just uh, south of Mason City, just to the uh, northeast of Waterloo, Iowa. And it's that activity now that has moved up over us. And we take a look at our uh, radar in the past, uh, oh, about six hours, you'll be able to see down here the area of precipitation moving northeastward, now moving through the Twin Cities, a pretty good area surrounding us. Let's take a look at our live picture right now. That has now shifted over a little bit more where most of the eastern part of the uh, cities and the southern part of the cities is getting uh, some light rain with more to move in out here to the west and catch the western suburbs uh, throughout the night tonight. And some of that may even develop into light thunderstorms uh, through the evening tonight. Our satellite sequence shows the clouds moving up out of the southeast. Uh, a couple of low pressure areas, one that's moving through the Ohio River Valley area, producing those uh, th thunderstorms and tornadoes all the way from Pennsylvania down into uh, parts of uh, Missouri and Arkansas. Another little circulation beginning to develop back here, and, and that uh, combining with this one is actually what's producing the precipitation over us at this time. The U.S. map have a stationary front extending all throughout the Ohio River Valley area. We've had reports of thunderstorms with uh, hail, uh, some strong straight line winds, winds up to 70 miles an hour, in addition to tornadoes that occurred in Pennsylvania and also down in uh, Missouri. Anywhere between uh, one and three inches of rain has fallen along this front. And back in the west, in Wyoming, they are getting snow still. The snow is beginning to taper off, but Lander, Wyoming, has ended up with 14 inches of snow since Saturday. And uh, this morning, Casper, Wyoming, had six inches of snow on the ground. It was still snowing lightly there, and some of that snow moving into the extreme western part of uh, the Dakotas, where they have some uh, light snow expected in the Black Hills area, and even for the Arrowhead area of Minnesota tonight, uh, there could be some light snow flurries mixed with the rain shower activity. This low generally moving south of us, and as we said, just the northern fringes of it affecting us, and after this moves out tomorrow, high pressure building in behind it for clearing skies later in the day. Cloudy, showers, uh, possible thunderstorm through the night tonight. We expect an overnight low of about 42 degrees. By tomorrow afternoon, we'll be looking at clearing with the showers having ended through the morning hours. Winds out of the north at 10 to 20 and a high temperature of 58 degrees. Definitely cooler than we've been running. The extended outlook then calls for partly to mostly sunny conditions uh, through Friday. And I uh, hate to put that up there with the opening of fishing season coming up, <laughs> but it does look like another chance of rain on Saturday. We'll watch that a little closer as we get closer to the weekend okay. and let you know what's going on. I had a lot of calls about fishing season. <laughs> this, is a, this is a remarkable story. I can't remember when this has ever happened to the Twin Cities to give us two reasons to be proud tonight. The first, a group of chess players from Plymouth Junior High School returned from the National Chess Tournament in Philadelphia tonight with a second place trophy. The second reason for pride, a group of kids from Hosterman Junior High School in the same district returned to the Twin Cities tonight on a different flight with the first place National Chess Trophy. I don't think that's ever happened in the history of National Chess. You didn't happen to catch the Chinese Acrobatic Theater while you were in China, did you? No, I hear they're great. Oh, they are sensational. And it's a 67-member it's a acrobatic troupe, and they put on a show today for the lunch hour crowd in the Crystal Court of the IDS Center. And there will be 17 individual acts during its six performances beginning tomorrow night through Saturday at Northrop Auditorium on the university campus. Watch this. Fantastic. Another performer holds four poles in each hand with spinning plates atop each. More poles on top of the plates and more plates on top of the second set of poles. Does a better job of juggling than Mike Fairborn the day after a faulty forecast. It all begins tomorrow night at the Northrop Auditorium. It's two, work 
just like one. At National Car, we're 12,000 people who know what it means to be a team. That's how teamwork gets it done. It's wanting to do more, because it's not just you you're working for. It's having people count on you and pleasing them by coming through. It's working together with national pride. We're the big green team. We're on your side. Our certified training and special tools will help your car run smooth. With care and skill, we'll work to solve whatever's worrying you. That's CertiCare. At Amico, CertiCare. CertiCare means certified mechanics using modern equipment on car repairs from tune-ups to brake work. You get a written estimate and expert care, dealer-backed in writing. CertiCare. At Amico, CertiCare. Prices have been slashed again during the Zare Shopper City going out of business sale. Yes, prices are slashed again. Their total complete stock is being sold at 30% off, with savings up to 60% on selected yellow tag items. All Zare merchandise will be sold, including famous brands on a first-come, first-served basis. Every Zare department, every line, clothing, houseware, stereo, hardware, appliances, toys, sporting goods, and more. All sales are final, so hurry. Shop these hours now during the Zare Shopper City going out of business sale. It's the buy of a lifetime. London. Fly there non-stop on Northwest Orient. $582 round trip. It is apparent Pete Redfern is fast becoming the ace of the Twins pitching staff. Tonight in Boston, Redfern pitched eight solid innings as the Twins beat the Red Sox 4-3. Redfern is now 5-1. He's been the only consistent Twins starter this year. Kenny Landrell helped the cause with a solo home run here in the third inning, giving the Twins a 3-1 lead. Landrell has now hit safely in 15 straight games. But in the fifth inning, Freddie Lynn, with that classic swing, ties the game with his third home run of the year. And let us tell you, it's 3-3 now, and let us tell you, the wind was swirling around Old Fenway tonight, uh, giving infielders and outfielders really fits all night. Third baseman John Castino, look at the catch there. Uh, one of those Chinese acrobats. Looks just like that. Ball territory to end the inning. The Twins won the game in the top of the ninth. Butch Weiniger hit a check swing double to score Rick Sofield right down the left field line. Sofield scores from second. Doug Corbett relieved in the ninth to pick up his third save of the season. Final, the Twins over Boston 4-3. It snaps a 14-game losing streak for the Twins at Fenway Park. They hadn't won there since August of 1977. Elsewhere, Texas 5-1 over Baltimore. John Matlack, the winner, he's 3-0. Zisk is fifth. Sunberg is fourth home runs. Kansas City bombing the Yankees tonight, 10-3. To They're in the ninth inning. The Yankee killer Paul Splitorf in there for the Royals. One game in the National League. The Cubs lead the Dodgers, 1-0. They're in the second. Russell against Sutton. As part of Historic Preservation Week, an exhibition kitten ball game was held tonight at Parade Stadium in Minneapolis. Did you know that kitten ball originated in Minneapolis in 1895? And this man, Bruce Rober, is the grandson of the originator of kitten ball, Louis Rober. And Bruce managed the Minneapolis firemen tonight in their game against the Minneapolis Park and Recreation Board. They used the 16-inch kitten ball, of course. Kitten ball is still played today, but uh, it has led us to what we primarily refer to as softball. At last report, the firemen were leading the park's people 4-3 to three in the third inning. All indications are leaning toward an excellent fishing opener this Saturday in Minnesota. Warm weather during the spawning season has produced record hatches in many lakes. Crappie fishermen telling me that uh, they're hitting walleyes, even though you can't keep them yet in Minnesota. And guides are looking for a super opener. We've come a long way in fishing equipment over the years. Tom Sawyer settled for a stick and some string with a hook on it. Today, a rod shop. Uh, at uh, Tackle Store represent, re resembles a jail with the fishing rod revolution moving from fiberglass to the latest in graphite for lightweight yet effectiveness. Tackle buyer John Goplin says graphite's great, but now there's boron. The graphite, okay, will give him the sensitivity in the sense of he's able to feel the fish hit right through the rod instead of watching the tip of the rod, okay? The new material they've come up with is boron which is a lighter fiber even than graphite and even more sensitive. And the thing with boron they claim, but it hasn't been proven in my eyes yet, is it's stronger. And tomorrow night we'll check the various reels to match that rod you select. The uh, on-again, off-again heavyweight title bout between Muhammad Ali and WBC champion Larry Holmes, scheduled for July 11th in Rio de Janeiro, has been called off. 
Uh, Harold Smith, the executive director of Muhammad Ali Enterprises, has confirmed the fight will not take place on that date or site, and no other arrangements have been made to this point. Uh, things are going from bad to worse for the California Angels. The Angels have lost six games in a row. They are in the cellar of the American League West. And now this guy, Don Baylor, who is off to a poor start this season, will be out with the California lineup uh, for the next six weeks with a fractured wrist. Baylor was the American League MVP last season, has yet to hit a home run this season. And Normandale Community College and Inver Hills had quite a wild doubleheader today. Normandale winning the first game 12 to 9. There were 10 home runs hit in that game, five for each team. In the nightcap, Normandale trailed 8 0 in the first inning, go on to win the game 16 14 for quite a sweep in that one, Normandale. Okay, uh, thank you, Ralph. And that is it for this edition of the 10 p.m. Report. Thank you, and good night. Good night. two classic interpretations by Piaget. 18 karat gold, hand carved link by link. Or a dial sliced from a single opal, circled with marquee diamonds. Every Piaget is created totally by hand in Lakoto Fay, Switzerland. The most expensive watch in the world. Piaget. Available at Fine Jewelers. You bet I've been checking. Joe found some. Pete found some cutworm. I found cutworm. It's trouble. Corn cutworm, a big problem that needs fast action. It's serious. In fact, if you find just two cutworms and three cut plants per 100 plants, it pays you to use Lorsban 4E. So expect cutworm. Dig for cutworm where you see bare spots or cut plants. And for cutworm, use Lorsban 4E to get unsurpassed control. Lorsban 4E from Dow. Back in the early 50s, I was just a wee boy, but the folks at Wheelhorse were already building quality lawn and garden tractors, like this one. Today, Wheelhorse is still engineered to be hard-working and durable, with quality features like heavy-duty construction, full floating mowers, and a wide range of models and attachments. Today, more than ever, a Wheelhorse is excellent value, and that's something a Scotsman can appreciate. WCCO Television, Minneapolis, St. Paul. Say, call this a powerful book. Its title is Heart Sounds. Yes, it is on the bestseller, and it's going to listen, and will be for a long time. Its author is Martha Wyman Lear. Mrs. Lear is a widow, and this is the story of how she became a widow. In 1973, Mm -hmm. Your husband suffered a heart attack, as we call it. Right. As they say in the hospitals, myocardial infarction.